Hey everybody, Box Day, boxday.blogspot.com. Sorry I'm a little late. Uh, had some had some connection issues. Uh, for some reason, Periscope was not uh, liking the liking the internet connection too much. Um, interesting, interesting weekend. Um, I think that the left uh, has an idea that they're going to be regretting the action of the judge in uh, putting a halt on the God Emperor's immigration order. Um, it's very, very clear that Donald Trump is not at all happy at what is obviously a, a ridiculous, ridiculous decision. And um, I actually think that this is potentially a good thing because uh, you know it's becoming clear that the left is going to react, overreact, double down and, and react in, in a crazy, crazy manner no matter what Donald Trump does. And so what that means is they're effectively giving him carte blanche because, you know, if you're going to, if you're, you know, like they say, if you're something like goose and a rabbit, I can't remember what the exact, uh, how the anal analogy went exactly, but the point is, if you're going to get in trouble for something, you might as well get in trouble for something big. If you're going to engender violent, violent protests across the country, then you might as well get it for a complete Muslim ban as for you know, enacting this, this uh, Obama style, you know, reviving this Obama order. Um, you know, I wasn't crazy about his initial order. I mean, I was glad to see him do something. But in terms of the specifics, I was less than enthusiastic about it simply because it struck me as being a little bit too clever by half. You know, it, it didn't strike me as a, you know, a lot of the stuff that that's, we've been seeing is stuff that strikes me as Steve Bannon type stuff. You know, uh, stuff that is indicative of a highly strategic thinker. I don't think that is what we were seeing out of, uh, out of the administration with that you know, that finessing of, oh, isn't this clever? Um, when they complain, then we'll just point out that it's the same as Obama's thing and it's not really our fault, tee hee hee. You know, that, I mean, that kind of thinking is, is something you'd expect more out of the, the conventional Republican playbook. And so, uh, you know, I don't, obviously I, I'm not privy to, to discussions in the, the Trump inner circle, but it wouldn't surprise me much if that strategy was recommended as an alternative to whatever it was that uh, Trump and Bannon wanted to do in the first place. You know, I mean, you know, Trump had talked about openly about a complete Muslim ban uh, earlier. So why did they come in with this lame Obama style thing that, that was clearly just um, not even a half measure? I mean, it's not even a, and, and then, you know, and then trying to defend it rather you know, having spokespeople trying to defend it rather helplessly saying, well, it, it, it's not a Muslim ban though. Well, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they do. It, it, the, the reaction is going to be hysterical and over the top and violent and relentless no matter what, which means, you know, they should not allow themselves to be guided in any way by what the reaction is. We know the reaction is going to be bad from the left. We know that the media is going to scream and pitch a fit and threaten and and call everyone Nazis no matter what so you know deal with it accept it get used to it and and then go ahead and do exactly what you think you should do now the topic of tonight's uh, discussion is winning the street war and the reason I decided to talk about this is because I got an email today from Katrina she's the blonde woman who appeared on Stefan Molyneux's show last night. Uh, I watched that. And uh, she's the one whose husband was uh, beaten unconscious by the Antifa thugs at Berkeley. And what I wanted to, you know, I, I watched the video um, and I, I listened to her account and I also heard from a couple other people who were there. <coughs> and the thing that occurred to me is that the Antifa is organized um, 
but contrary to what some of the people have been saying, they're not particularly disciplined. Um, I was kind of surprised to observe that the woman who had both pepper sprayed uh, Katrina as well as the girl you saw get pepper, spray, pepper sprayed when she was giving a, a video or an interview to the cameraman, um, I, I w it was interesting to learn that the person doing the pepper spraying was a woman. You know, you could see that the person wasn't very big, but, you know, because they were uh, all wrapped up, uh, you, you couldn't tell from the video what they were. But uh, yeah, Katrina said both her, um, you know, both the, the one who did it uh, and then the one who did the other one, um, that they were both women. And so what that tells you is that, you know, this is not a, a group that is organized for actual uh, fighting. Um, and that's why they pursue the what uh, one observer called uh, hyena pack tactics. Uh, he was he was he's somebody who's a, a you know, trained military guy, and he was at one of these events. And he said that uh, the way that, that Antifa is operating is that they're they're being they've got these small groups that are being directed. Um, he said you can sp usually spot. The director he's the one who is is sending them forward and then what they're trying to do is they're trying to draw off people one at a time and then uh, circle them and beat them and so you know th these are these are terror tactics these are uh, attempts to threaten and and make people frightened and that sort of thing but they're not really um coordinated in the method that say uh the the street fighters in korea in japan and in Ukraine are, you know, if you look at if you look at the way the protesters in Ukraine are set up, um, you know, they're they're all carrying shields, they're all carrying essentially baseball bats or wooden staffs. They all have uh, motorcycle helmets on, and they also tend to sort of stick together almost like a, a ancient phalanx. And so, you know, so what that tells you is that they're that they are their current tactic is something that can be uh, disrupted, but it has to be disrupted intelligently because what skirmishers do is the whole skirmishing philosophy is hit, run, and then draw the enemy forward. You know, the, um, the Parthians used to, used to attack the Romans that way. The, you know, the, the Parthian shot refers to a arrow being shot by somebody riding away and shooting backwards. And so what the Parthians would, would do, and, and the, the Muslims also did this uh, to the Crusaders, um, is that they, they would attack with their light cavalry, and then they would feign a retreat, and then when the, the, the Crusaders with their heavier horses and armor would chase them, uh, they would get, get spread out, They would they, you know because they wouldn't all stay together in a tight, compact mass. They would start to spread out, and at that point, the Muslims or the Parthians, whoever, would, would turn around, and come back and then they would have the advantage over the undisciplined Romans or Crusaders who had left their, the, the, the safety of their, their disciplined force. And so, you know, that's what they're trying to do. You know, that's what skirmishers, skirmishers basically exist for two reasons, either to, either to draw people out or to just uh, sort of chip away at them and create an opening for the, for the actual infantry to come in. And so what that tells us is that is two things. First of all, they always have to come forward. They always have to engage. You know, this form of skirmish is melee, hand to hand, and so, uh, and and the tactic that they commonly use is they will grab someone's hat. You know, especially like the those red MAGA hats are, are prime targets. What they do is they grab the hat and then jump back. And they are going to encourage the, um, they're, they're hoping that the person whose hat was just taken will jump forward to try to get it back. And then they can surround him, cut him off and pull him, pull him um, into their circle. Well, there's your tactic right there. There's your obvious tactic right there. They have to come forward, right? So the correct thing to do when someone is coming forward to grab a hat is, is for the, the people being attacked to grab that person Pull, pull them behind their lines. And, and ideally, you know, you'll, you'll be in a group of, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 people. You know, you, you should not be attending these things alone or in pairs or that sort of thing. It's dangerous. 
It's going to be, it's, it's just going to get worse. And I'm not saying don't go. I'm not saying don't get involved. I'm saying that if you go and if you're involved, you need to be careful and you need to be prepared. And so, you know, what I, what I recommend is that you always, uh, carry, you know, you know, what zip ties are, you always carry a few zip ties with you. They're perfectly legal. They're not weapons. Um, but they're fantastic for very quickly uh, incapacitating people. Uh, I did some training with um, a European military. I was uh, I was actually <laughs> I was actually a uh, a, uh, a terrorist, I guess you might say, or a, a hijacker. I think was our official term. And, and what what they had us doing was um, we would ambush a a truck. Um, we would hood and and uh, zip tie all the the people on the truck take them and then and then basically try to um, try to break them um, and it, it was a lot of fun it was it was <laughs> it was uh, definitely an intense role-playing experience um, but what I what I learned is how quickly and easily you can incapacitate someone simply by getting those zip ties on them and so you know if I, I think that um, it would be very very effective for um, the responsible people who are being attacked to adopt a strategy of, uh, you know, call it catch and release if you want. Catch them, zip them, turn them over to the cops. You know, don't beat on them, don't hurt them because that, that's, only going to, that's only going to get you in trouble. Um, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with defending yourself and rendering the person attacking you uh, unable to continue attacking you. Uh, you know the fact that they are the, the chances are very good that they've got one or more illegal uh, items on them, whether it's whether it's weaponry, whether it's uh, pepper spray or some sort of illegal variant of pepper spray. Um, you know that's only going to that's only going to get them in trouble, not you. Another t another um, another tactic that can work. Um, you know a lot of people don't realize that they have perfectly good defensive weapons with them. You know when I was listening to Katrina, you know, she and her husband were much better prepared than the average person. They were actually wearing Kevlar vests. But that's a defensive tactic. You cannot beat offense with defense. And so, um, you know, if you think about it, everybody's got a, a, a fantastic weapon that, that they wear every day. It's your belt. You know, the when <clears throat> you, you, you know, one thing I noticed when I was watching the video is you kept seeing the Antifa people doing this, reaching out to grab, um, reaching out to pepper spray, you know, constantly grabbing, grabbing, grabbing. Well, I don't know if, if you've ever, if any of you have ever done any martial arts, but, um, you know, that is an incredibly, incredibly vulnerable position. Um, you know, anybody who's got, de you know, the, the woman that was doing the pepper spraying, any guy with decent size could have simply grabbed her arm and literally thrown her over the barricade. Um, you know, belts are, are also very useful in this regard. You simply um, make a loop. One of those arms come forward. You catch the arm, pull it tight, and they're captured. You know, pull them back, zip, zip them, and, uh, and turn them over to the police. Um, you know, whether the police are going to do anything, you know, probably not in some locales, but, uh, citizen arrests are legal and certainly somebody who is, uh, wearing a mask and attacking people is almost certainly, you know, uh, I mean, they are engaged in criminal activity. It's not something that you have to sit there and suffer, but the key is, you know, they are engaged in what they, you know, hyena pack tactics. And that means if you're going to defend against them, you need to have intelligent wolf pack tactics that will neutralize those tactics and allow you to uh, turn their, uh, uh, turn their attacks against them. It's kind of like Kung Fu. You want to use their, you want to use their strength and aggression against them. They don't have a lot of strength. You know, these are not, I mean, you can see from the videos, these are not, uh, you know, 280 pound football players out there. Um, but that doesn't mean they're not dangerous. It doesn't mean that they can, they shouldn't be taken seriously. Um, you know, these are violent people. These are people who are 
not only willing to harm other people, but who are actively seeking to do so. And so you have a moral responsibility to defend yourself and to defend those around you. And if you happen to be defending Western civilization at the, the same time, so much the better. And so, um, so anyhow, you know, the things are going to change. You know, those are the tactics that Antifa is using today. Um, they're pretty much the tactics that they're using in, in Europe for the most part. But what we know from um, what we know from Korea, what we know from Japan, and what we know from Ukraine is that they're going to continue to double down. They're going to continue to get more violent. You know, they're going to start using Molotov cocktails. People are going to start getting burned. Um, and that's something that, that you need to be aware of. And when their tactics change, then the rights tactics have to change as well. You know, this isn't, I mean, it, it is, it is too bad that it has come to this, but there's no point in, in us dwelling on the fact that, that we don't like that it is like this. We have to deal with the world as it is. We have to deal with the United States as it is. And so, um, now I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic that the Trump administration is not going to allow this to, to go, uh, consequence free. I, I believe, I, you know, I believe that the God Emperor is readying some sort of plan. What it will be, I have no idea. Knowing, knowing the way that Trump has acted in the, in the past, I expect it will be something unexpected and something also very effective. You know, maybe, maybe they'll, you know, who knows, maybe they'll completely defund any university where this happens. Maybe they'll, you know, maybe they'll start requiring the police to actually defend the, the public. I don't know. But in the meantime, you know, we cannot trust the police. We cannot trust the police to defend anyone. You've seen the pictures of a hundred riot officers sitting inside the building having coffee while people are being beaten unconscious outside. You know, the police are not going to get involved because the, the left controls their activities in, in those locales. You know, obviously things would, be, would have been very different if this was happening somewhere in Texas. But, um, but as long as, as the authorities are sympathetic to the left, as long as the authorities are offering cover to the left, that means that you can't count on the police and you know you can't count on the media. One thing Katrina said that was kind of shocking was that after her friend got attacked on camera, the cameraman started yelling at her and her friend for being violent. I mean, it's insane. The, the, their only connection to violence was being the victims of violence, and yet they're literally being attacked for it by the media. So, you know, you, you can't expect a fair shake from the media. You can't expect a fair shake from the, from the police. So um, it's very important to be careful. Take them seriously. And when you're going to an event, like a, you know, a, if Milo is giving a, a speech somewhere, if some other you know, right wing figure is appearing somewhere, if you're going to a Trump rally, whatever, um, make sure that you assemble a group of people, make sure that you've got some, you know, at least one or two people in the group who have some experience with some form of, of fighting, whether it's, uh, you know, martial arts or boxing or, or wrestling or anything else. And then listen to them, stick together and make, and, and, um, you know, uh, Mike Cernovich is going to be covering this issue more. Uh, Stefan Molyneux is going to be covering this issue more. Um, and, you know, we'll probably be discussing more on, on the blog and other places, um, you know, what the other side's tactics are and how they can be countered. Um, you know, what, I mean, we've written about this. I've, I've mentioned this book before. Read it. 4G, the 4GW Handbook. What we are seeing is a mild form of fourth generation war on U.S. streets. And it's very important to, if you're going to get caught up in it, you want to make sure you win. You do not want to lose. You know, you don't want to be the one that's beaten into a coma. You don't want to be the one that ends up getting your ribs broken. Um, <clears throat> and so I would encourage you to... To read up on fourth generation warfare, read up on 4GW, understand what it is, understand what's going, and take it seriously. Um, you know these are uh, the the notorious interesting times that the the Chinese philosophers used to talk about, and so um, 
And then one more thing. Um, I would encourage any of you who are in an area where one of these events is going to be taking place, go there early with a video camera and get in a good location up high, you know, like in a nearby building in a, you know, and at a window and videotape what happens, you know, video what happens, put it on YouTube because it's, it's very important to be able to uh, puncture the media narrative. And, you know, I've seen a couple of these, these similar videos that were taken from up high in Europe, and you can see very clearly what the Antifa tactics are. You can see what they're doing, and you can see that it's very purposeful, and you can see that they are the aggressors. That's not going to be seen from these, you know, confused, jostling, uh, you know, people all shouting at each other um, that, that you see from the, the media film. Um, but what we need to see is we, we need a bird's eye view on what is happening at these events. And so I, I would encourage, you know, and, and that's a much safer thing to do than, than try to you know, walk through the, the crowds and so forth. So, um, so that's, that's my advice on that. Um, I'm, I'm probably gonna be doing, I don't know what time, I'll do a dark stream tomorrow sometime, but I'll be watching the Super Bowl, so um, it won't be at the usual time. Uh, stop by the blog voxday.blogspot.com and uh, I'll, I'll say what time I'm going to do it then. Oh, and I forgot, um, I published a new book today. Uh, it's a collection of, it's a 750 page collection of about four years of my political columns. It's got a couple bonus pieces in it. Uh, it's called uh, Innocence and Intellect 2001 to 2005 uh, and it's currently the best-selling book in like philosophers or something like that. So um, you can find it on Amazon. Um, I, you know, I think, I think it's, a, it's a, a really interesting snapshot of the history of that time. You know, going over it when we were editing it, uh, it was amazing. It, it, it was like reading about a different planet. Um, a different, it was a very different time. And, and those of you who are younger, I think, would, would probably be very surprised by how things looked to us then. That's why I called it innocence, because it wasn't just that I was more innocent. It was that it was a more innocent time. Anyhow, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.